Right. Uh, today we're going to cover this topic 13.1 to 13.3 in which uh, it will describe about the Newton's law of motion, equations of motion and equation of motion for a system of particles. So to the objective, students will be able to write the equation of motion for an accelerating body. And second, you will be able to draw the free body and kinem kinetic diagrams for an accelerating body. So before this, we just learn about how to draw the free body diagram in which it will consist of a body and the indication of force. But now we need to include another matter, which is acceleration in a kinetic diagrams right just keep this part right this is one of the application the motion of an object depends on the forces acting on it so for example this one a parachutist relies on the atmospheric drag resistance force generated by her parachute to limit her velocity so for example this one if you see this is the parachute and the parachute we create we uh, a force that we say as drag force so the drag force is responsible to generate uh, a rest another resistant force in which it will reduce the velocity why because knowing the drag force we technically we can have a, some kind of importance during the landing Okay, because it mentioned knowing the drag force, how can we determine the acceleration or velocity of the parachutes at any point in time? Uh, so we can estimate how much is the acceleration, acceleration and the velocity of the parachutes during the landing. All right, another application, the baggage. Okay, in this figure, the baggage truck A tows cart B and cart C. If we know the fri the frictional force developed at the dri the driving wheels of the truck, could we determine the acceleration of the truck? But how can we also determine the horizontal force acting on the coupling between the truck and the cut B? Okay, this is needed when designing the coupling or understanding why it failed. Okay, another application a frag elevator is lifted using a motor attached to a cable and pulley system as shown so in this case i have a motor here and then there is some kind of connection between three type three pulleys with some kind of cable in order to lift this this load Okay, how can we determine the tension force in the cable required to lift the elevator and load at a given acceleration? Okay, so means that we technically if we know how much is the motor operate and we can set how much the acceleration that we we want to use here, we technically can design how much is the cable as long as we know how much is the tension force developed in the cable right this is needed to decide the size of the cable that should be be used the size here could be in terms of the diameter of the cable itself right is the tension force in the cable greater than the weight of the elevator and its load here you need to understand the summation of force if the force tension is greater than the weight means that uh, the weight of the elevator and its loads means that the force uh, the means that the cable might be able to to break all right newton's law of motion the motion of a particle is governed by newton's three laws of motion okay the first one a particle or we say the first law a particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line at constant velocity. 
will remain in this state if the resultant force acting on the particle is zero. What do you understand with constant velocity? Constant velocity technically, if we derive that or we differentiate that with, res with respect to time, we'll get acceleration equal to zero. So summation of force equal to m a, which is a here is going to be zero, means that summation of force will be zero. So a particle is technically originally, originally at rest. This type of law you have covered here in statics. Okay, for second law, if the resultant force on the particle is not zero, means that there is some kind of a summation with a force that create a value. If the resultant force on the particle is not zero, the particle experiences an acceleration in the same direction as the resultant force. So this acceleration has a magnitude proportional to the resultant force. Okay, another one, the last one is the third law motion of Newton laws. Mutual forces of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite, and collinear. You might find this third law equation in some kind of mechanism of uh, shooting or in terms of collision. Okay, the first and third law were used in, de in developing the concepts of statics. Newton's second law forms the basic of the study of dynamics. Okay, mathematically, Newton's second law of motion can be written as F equal to MA. If you see here, F is, indicate, is indicated in red, with the same with A, means that this is in terms of vector. Where F is the resultant unbalanced force acting on the particle and A is the acceleration of the particle. The positive scalar M is the mass of the particle. So Newton's second law cannot be used when the particle speeds approach the speed of light or if the size of the particle S is extremely small which is approximately size of an atom. Right, this is say, Newton's second law, uh, Newton's law of gravitational attraction. Any two particles or bodies have a mutually attractive gravitational force acting between them. Newton postulated the law governing this gravitational force as F equal to G M1 times M2 divided by R square, where F is technically is the force of attraction between two bodies. G is the universal constant of gravitation. M1 and M2 is the mass of the body. And R is the distance between centers of the two bodies. When near, to, uh, when near the surface of the Earth, the only, the only gravitational force having any sizable magnitude is that between the earth of the body so we say or we call this force as a weight of the body so mass and weight what is the difference between mass and weight it is important to understand the difference between the mass and weight of a body so mass mass is an absolute property of a body it is in the independent of the gravitational field in which it is measured the mass provides a measure of the resistance of a body to change in velocity as defined by Newton's second law of motion. If you take the same F equal the same equation, F equal to MA, so we technically we can rearrange back M equal to F divided by A. So M here, the weight of the body is not absolute since it depends on the gravitational field in which it is measured. Weight is defined as W equal to mg. The mass that we obtain from the second Newton law here need to be uh, multiplied with g. g here is the acceleration due to gravity. For example, Earth, we have uh, g equal to 9.81 meter per second square.